Hello and thank you for your interest in Service Point 365. In today's demo we're going to show you the fundamentals of the application and how it can help your organization light up Office 365 SharePoint Online to manage your business related content and information. We're looking at the main menu of Service Point 365 and you'll see it consists of 11 separate centers. Each center is designed to manage different content or different content areas associated with the business from internal information for the company center which would uh, typically be used for uh, intranet type information where you can have things like company calendars and and um, announcements uh, employee lists each department can have their own separate uh, workspace which uh, is dedicated to their needs for documents and calendars and issues lists and so forth so Company Center uh, typically is leveraged for uh, an intranet type offering. If we move over to the right, we're going to see Client Center. This is where you can uh, store and manage all of your clients or prospective clients. And not only just the uh, master record as far as who they are and their address and some fundamental information, but also you can have a workspace that's dedicated to each client which uh, contains documents and con additional contacts and tasks and, and a number of other things related to that particular client or prospective client. Project Center is designed to where your projects would be managed. So within Project Center we will find all of the projects and then each, work, each project can have its own workspace which has the uh, associated documents and deliverables and task lists and project calendars and and all those things that go along with a project. If you're winning projects, chances are you're having to bid them. And uh, Sales Center is all about proposals and bids and opportunities and managing the, that information so that uh, you can have a spot to collaborate on building out the estimates and the bids and all the pre-sales information. And then if you win um, that proposal, if you win the job, then you can automatically turn that into a project in Project Center. If I look at uh, Staffing Center and Resource Center, this is all about your uh, internal resources or your, um, your relationships with other resource firms. So Staffing Center provides the ability to where somebody can go in and put in a staffing request. Let's say you need a, a business analyst or project manager for a particular project. That request can be entered in the Staffing Center along with the duration and target bill rates and a lot of other uh, things such as skills that are necessary. Then whoever is responsible for filling that request can uh, look through the resource center to determine what is the best match for that staffing request and make that, uh, make that match. If you look down here at delivery center, uh, typically this is used for uh, methodologies. Many organizations have uh, processes, procedures, methodologies for how they go about doing their business and this gives you the ability to store each uh, methodology separately and also uh, associate the appropriate documents with that methodology so that when people are uh, wanting to follow that methodology they can pull from the correct pool of template documents that go along with it. Solution Center many times is used for um, kind of the standard uh, uh, guide solutions, uh, materials, solution guides, uh, end user training material uh, materials associated with the different products and solutions that uh, a company may represent. So this becomes that central repository that's always kept up to date. So again, people can find the latest and greatest uh, information related to a particular solution. Uh, knowledge Center is uh, typically a general knowledge repository, which can be anywhere from uh, industry best practices, uh, safety training, uh, any information that is um, you want to make generally available to uh, people to be able to to help train them and provide them job aids in, in performing their jobs or functions. So that's the uh, Knowledge Center. If we look down at Partner Center, uh, a lot of organizations have partners that they're working with, whether it be contractors or subs or vendors, um, subcontractors, and this gives you the ability to manage those relationships and also provide workspaces that can be uh, permissioned so that the partner can also have access and then you can download and upload information uh, directly with the partner through this uh, Partner Center. And then uh, lastly, we have an area uh, support center, which is really typically for issues and um, managing uh, issue logs and, and also providing uh, support documents that would be useful for people to have easy access to. 
So when all these centers come together, you have the, uh, can deliver uh, quite a wide uh, breadth of uh, capability, anywhere from a company intranet to uh, a CRM type of uh, functionality to project management, uh, proposal management, resource management, process management, knowledge management, um, partner management, and issue management. And these centers are all connected together. So whenever we go into one center, uh, it will reuse what information it can from another center. So let's go through just a quick little scenario. A lot of uh, organizations are uh, doing uh, projects in some form or fashion. So let's, let's go into Project Center, and, and this will be a good representation of how the other centers are also structured and how you go about using them. So if we go into Project Center, it's going to show us, uh, first of all, uh, all the different projects that we have going on. So here we have, uh, we're in now within Project Center, and you can see that we have a number of uh, items in the list here, and these are all the different projects that we have going on. So it shows us in this view the client, uh, the name of the project, and then there's some other metadata or tags just to uh, information that's useful for that project for us to be able to find it uh, or filter it or search for it. And this is called metadata and we've uh, we deliver with the application um, a couple hundred uh, custom fields of metadata that uh, come out of the box that allows you to do tagging like this. So for instance the ability to tag it by what service line this project's a part of, what type of project, what geography, who's the project lead, status, um, these, but this is just uh, examples of the metadata. There's many, many other fields that you could instead pull forward and include in these views. And the value is that uh, very easy when people go into Project Center, if they want to if they want to uh, sort, sequence, find um, different types of projects or within different geographies, you can then leverage this information. For instance, if I want to see all the projects that we have going on in the Midwest, I can simply now use a filtering capability to change my view so that it's showing me just the Midwest projects. Uh, likewise, I could say uh, I want to see Midwest uh, consulting services projects. So you can see how, um, if you're uh, associating the metadata or tagging the metadata, how useful that can be to be able to create and find and filter and sort um, the information uh, in the most valuable manner. To add a new project, uh, you simply go New Item, and what it does is it brings up the Project Add screen, and this will also show you examples of all the metadata that we uh, deliver with, with the app. Uh, as well as you immediately will see that uh, these things are connected. So the first thing, if I'm going to add a new project, it's going to prompt me for which client uh, this project's for. And the client set it's displaying in the dropdown are clients that are being pulled from the client center. So again, uh, how these centers are connected together. Uh, give it a project name. And then once again, um, seeing examples of some of the metadata that we uh, have uh, delivered out of the box with this solution. And these are all metadata fields that are related to a project. Uh, clients would have their own set of metadata. Uh, sales opportunities would have their own set of metadata and so on. So each center has its own um, group of fields or metadata associated with it. And through this then you can easily go in and then you can tag for instance in this case project you know, what is the status of the project, uh, what type of project it, it is, and the values that are displayed in the drop-downs are values uh, that would be your values. So we, we ship um, uh, a number of default values that you can use the app out of the box, but more likely you're going to go in to these lists and very simply um, change uh, the drop-down values to ref reflect the ones that are valid for your company, and that's, that is very easily done uh, as a part of this. So uh, again, somebody would go through, would associate the necessary fields. Um, we're, not, we're not requiring that you enter all these fields. Um, the only fields that we require in this case, uh, we only require a client and a project name. You can see that these are fields that are starred or asterisked. Um, but you can go through and uh, on these entry forms, you can go through and uh, make other fields required. You can also uh, resequence any field so I can move billable status up to, to be right below the project name. I could also go through and, um, and uh, hide fields. 
So uh, if you don't want people to even have to look at, for instance, uh, org unit, you're not going to use that field. You, want, you don't want people to look at it on the entry form. Uh, you can simply hide the field. So if, as I scroll through this uh, list of fields, again, we're looking at just project level metadata. You can see we've tried to anticipate a lot of information that companies would naturally want to use uh, project uh, or associate with their projects but we're not requiring that you enter it and we're not requiring that you use it so can, you can very easily go in and remove or hide the fields that you don't want to use. So um, that's how easy it is to add a new project to the list but then the real value is if you have a project you're probably going to want to store information related to it such as documents and task lists and calendars and contacts and so we've made that process very simple so if you wanted to um, create what we call a workspace which is really just a dedicated site associated with a project I simply select that project and uh, we've added a new option to the uh, menu bar which says create workspace so by launching that it actually uh, kicks off a provisioning engine which is uh, it running runs in Azure but it communicates with your Office 365 SharePoint tenancy and it creates a unique workspace for this particular project it also lays on that workspace a template layout which has a number of uh, areas or sections predetermined and then it also drops in next to the project this uh, link which uh, is, is how I would access the workspace once it's been generated so let's open up a sample workspace we're gonna the name of this client is web construction and the name of the project is service point 365 implementation so let's let's click on link to workspace and we'll open up what a sample workspace may look like so here we are we're looking at just a, an individual projects workspace and you'll be able to see at the top here we've got the name of the project which is service point 365 uh, here's some of the metadata that we've captured for this project and you can determine what fields you want to display here uh, and if I scroll down well, let's take a look at some of the other sections that are already uh, a part of our template so the first area is of course uh, documents so you this is where all your project documents and deliverables would be found and of course you can have folders and subfolders or you can, there's other metadata that you can tag to each uh, document that uh, gives it you know the types of documents and of course who, who modified it and status whether it's approved or not those, those are all examples of metadata that you can associate with documents and use instead of always uh, using folders and subfolders if I scroll down uh, we'll take a look at uh, here's a project calendar so this is great for major milestones uh, such as project shutdown dates or st uh, status meetings and so forth if we continue scrolling down we're also going to see um, here's an area for uh, contacts so our contacts who's working the project from our side as well as the clients contacts we also have um, uh, in the project uh, template uh, an issues list uh, automatically provisioned so you can record issues and work issues we also have a task list and uh, you can have different views of these task lists uh, this is just a simple task list or you can also have a, a Gantt chart view and a number of other views and if I keep scrolling down again we're looking at just uh, an example of one project workspace I can have a links area as well as uh, a place to store you know partner invoices if you're working with third parties so this gives you an example of what a standard workspace for a project may look like but uh, I'll show you in a minute that you have the ability to determine which of these sections do you actually want to use whenever you create a project workspace and you'll be able to um, change the configuration of, of how the what sections appear is also uh, you'll be able to uh, determine what what the sequence uh, down the page you want them to appear as well as things like what you want the default views uh, to be in each of these areas so um, let's let's go over and talk about that uh, for just a moment so um, if I go to uh, what we've done is uh, you know part of our goal is to make sure that uh, there's just minimal SharePoint skills that are necessary to uh, both set up as well as operate and configure uh, service point 365 so right now we're looking at a settings screen and the settings screens is where you can easily change configuration options so the first uh, the first section here shows you how you can uh, basically determine which centers you want to use so companies may not want to use all 11 centers 
right uh, day one so in that case you can turn on and off different centers and they they would be immediately removed uh, from from the menuing system uh, if you decide uh, later on that you want to start using a center you simply go in and turn it back on you also have the ability to change the names of the center so let's say rather than calling it sales center maybe we want to call it uh, proposal center as an example so you can rename centers and repurpose them um, for different reasons and also this is some bubble help uh, which if you put your cursor over a, a tile that shows you some additional information about that particular center as to what's behind it and again you can modify uh, all the text in here so the first level of conf configuration uh, that's very easily done is uh, determining which centers you want to use what what names you want to use and also what you know the purposes of them are so now if I scroll down, uh, we're going to talk about within each center now. Let's, say, let's use Project Center as an example since we were just on a project workspace. Uh, we can also go in and easily change um, the template uh, for a project workspace. This first section here shows you, if you recall, when we looked at the project workspace, we saw a document library, a contacts list, a calendar, task list. So you can easily go in and turn on and off uh, different sections that you may or may not want to use for, for your project workspace, as well as you can resequence. Let's maybe, um, maybe I want my issues log to be right underneath the document library. So I can simply drag and drop and it will uh, resequence uh, the template so that the next time uh, an issue uh, the workspace is generated it will adhere to whatever settings we have turned on here uh, for the project workspace um, you saw a, a, a section at the top where it showed some metadata uh, associated with the project you can again turn on and off different uh, fields uh, you can resequence the fields and also, if you were to go in and add new fields, uh, they would show up here and you can begin to use them. And then each of these sections, such as the document library, issues, contacts, if I scroll down a little bit further in the project center, center section, you'll see we also have the ability to even configure within each section. So here I am looking at the document library. I can turn on and off different fields that I want to have as the standard view for my document library. So exposing those fields as well as I can resequence those fields from left to right. And what all this does is, the, is changes the default view for the document library on the project workspace. So uh, again, even though we're delivered an app or a, so to speak a template here, we've given you the capability of going in and changing uh, the configuration of it so that it better matches how you want to use the environment. So that's a quick walkthrough of the base application as well as uh, giving you a quick walkthrough of the, some of the configuration options that you have available to you. Uh, last but not least, there's a full solution guide. If you look up here at the help menu, you'll click on that. There's actually a 100 page uh, solution document that goes through every center uh, shows you more about it, also covers the major tasks as to how you use a center. So very helpful information. So hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, brief demo of Service Point 365. And if you have other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Either visit us on our website, www.servicepoint365.com, or you can send us an email at info at servicepoint365.com. Thank you for your time.